back. We are going shopping today, but I'm also going to tell you about a book I read, and I think if you are into vintage fashion or you might be into old movies, I think you are going to love this, and I've gotten so into it, I'm almost to the point of obsession. So I'm going to tell you all about that while we are on our way to shop. I have several things I am looking for. Uh, the, today is a home decorating shopping day, but I don't know if I'll take you in some of the stores because some shops do not appreciate cameras. So I'll see what I can do, but we are going to talk about one book, well, actually it's two books we're going to talk about, and the movie. Today is really beautiful because it has cooled off a bit. Uh, I'm going to bounce it because I am on brick papers. Okay, now it's smoother. So, anyway, today is a beautiful day, and I'm going to find a place in just a few minutes for us to talk. Lucky, lucky, lucky me. Uh -oh. Okay, so I found a parking place. You can see there's several parking places over here, but I'm in the shade. If you have bright sunlight coming through the window, it can get hot. Not that I'm complaining because I know that some of you are farther north and you are not having this warm weather. Uh, it is a little cooler today than it has been. Not a bad thing. It's a, just a beautiful day here. So if you're thinking of coming to South Florida this time of year, I highly recommend it. And I have a... Uh, Every time I park somewhere to try to talk to you, somebody's either parks right beside me or gets, just has to see what's going on. So they just think I'm a crazy person talking to you about Valley of the Dolls. This book is fabulous. Now, let me start from the beginning. I saw a documentary about Sharon Tate, and we know that Sharon Tate was in the movie Valley of the Dolls, and she was the wife of uh, producer Roman Polanski, and then she died tragically about, um, I think it, I forgot what year it is. Anyway, she died tragically because she was murdered by the Charles Manson family, and so I was watching this documentary and I became interested in the fact that she was in Valley of the Dolls, but she had never really become a famous actress. She had been signed by one of the movie studios and she did a lot of bit parts. She had some small parts, like even in Beverly, the Beverly Hillbillies, she played in that and she played a character who, but she wore a dark wig. She, they tried to make her not look as pretty as she actually was because she very, she was very very pretty and so that began this craziness about valley of the dolls the craziness on my part because what i did was decide the movie sucks i mean it's just not that great but i love the makeup the hair the drama about it and I love the song the the title song in the movie there is somebody pulling up behind me of course and there's honestly there were like 20 parking places they could choose anyway so what I really love is the song in the movie and that song was sung by Dionne Morwick and she does an incredible job and somebody could probably remake that song but I don't know that it would be as good as the way she sang it. The song needs a new name. It's the theme from Valley of the Dolls. So anyway, the I watched the documentary and then I remembered I had seen the movie. So I thought, well, the movie was bad and it was overacted it was badly acted it was excessive it was patched together it's because and i found out the patchiness was because they just kept trying to lower the budget on the movie but i decided to read the book because you know 
the book is always better than a movie. So I read Valley of the Dolls. And if that wasn't enough, and I'm creating an obsession here, I read Dolls, Dolls, Dolls. And it is a book written by Stephen Rabello, and it's the most beloved bad book and movie of all time. And that is what is on the cover. It, I highly recommend it. If you like to know all the backstory of a movie, this really gets into it. But let's go back to the book, because the book was written by Jacqueline Suzanne, and she, at one time, wanted to be an actress, but she wasn't very successful at it. She was somewhat successful, but not really enough to make a good living at it, but she was a better writer, and she wrote several books, and one being Valley of the Dolls. So Valley of the Dolls has three main characters. There's Neely, there's Anne, and there's Jennifer, Jennifer North, and she, of course, is played by Sharon Tate. So in the book, she has the characters beginning in the 1940s and going through the late 60s, and their friendship, and it's not really friendship, it's just that they know each other. Um, at certain times during their life, they are friends, and sometimes they're not friends. But the reason the movie seems patched together is because the movie doesn't give you the backstory of these three characters like the book does. If you like the fame culture and you like um, soap opera like or even real housewives franchises you kind of get a lot of that feel to it and this was way back when this this book was in the 60s the movie was produced in the 67 and so according to Stephen Robello it took a long time to get the movie out because it kept being rewritten. According to Stephen Robello, the writers kept rewriting and rewriting the movie script, and it just turned into a big patchwork mess. But there are great things to say about the movie. I mean, the the hair, the makeup, the the costuming is incredible. Let me show you. Look at this. This is um. This is Barbara Parkins, and she plays Anne. Look at that hair style. I just love it. It's just so kitschy and over the top. And Barbara Parkins plays the part of Anne, who is like an icy New England aristocrat girl who, instead of just marrying the local that her parents wanted her to marry, she went to New York and she started working for an agency. And that's how all of these girls meet is through an agency. I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to give you the whole book because I want you to read it. If you haven't read it, I mean, it's been out forever. So if you haven't read it, uh, give it a try. It's a great book. It's a good beach read. It's a great beach read. And so then we, okay, we have Anne and then we have Neely. Neely is a hot mess. She just has a lot of male energy. She's aggressive. She's outspoken. She overdrinks. She's you name it, she does it. And then we have Jennifer North, who's played by in the movie, is played by Sharon Tate. And she is really good at playing this kittenish role. So I am now moving uh, the car because it seems like everybody wants to see what's going on. And I don't know, maybe people just don't have a thing to do today. But anyway, one of the interesting things about this role that Sharon Tate got as Jennifer North is that according to the book Dolls, 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 she was going to be played by Raquel Welch. Raquel Welch, Sharon Tate, and one other person were the three top chosen to be that character. And Raquel Welch had become fairly successful, and they didn't want to pay the salary that Raquel Welch would have needed to take the part. So they chose Sharon Tate, which was a great 
great choice, I think. I think Raquel Welch didn't have that little girl feel about her, you know, that little kittenish feel. Raquel Welch is a little bit more bold than that. So I think um, they made a really, really good choice. There are a lot of minor characters or supporting characters in the book that are interesting. There's Tony, and he's actually based on, supposedly based on Frank Sinatra. And okay, I found absolutely nothing I was looking for, but that's okay because that's the way I'm spending my day. And after that, I'm going to order online if I don't find the things I'm looking for. It's just household items. But where were we? Oh, and then there's Helen Larson, and she is played by Susan Hayward. And actually, that role was supposed to go to Judy Garland. And they had even done all of the costuming with Judy Garland. But Judy Garland just could not hold herself together enough to, to come into work every day. So they got rid of Judy Garland and brought in Susan Hayward. And I don't know if that would work today if you just fire somebody from a from casting but uh, at that time you could do that I'm sure now there'd be a million lawsuits and I've read that the look Sharon Stone used in the movie Casino is based on the same look that Sharon Tate used in the movie Valley of the Dolls and if you watch both of these movies you will definitely see that they both look very very similar of Helen is played by Susan Hayward and that character is based on Ethel Merman and so it's really odd how they based the characters on other actors and then some of those actors were actually going to be in the movie and it might have been interesting to see how that was going to work out. If you're not obsessed with the idea of watching the movie, I suggest that you read the book. I just love, love this book. It's so great. And I'll show you a couple more pictures that Stephen Robello has in his book because it gives you an idea that at the time in the 60s, this, this book and movie was considered to be so outrageous and scandalous. And look at that. That is the billboard for it, and I don't know if you can see it that close, but if you read this book, you will see it. I'll, I'll try to put a better picture up for you, but the girls were even on the cover of Look Magazine because of the scandal about it, and I thought that Stephen Robello did a great job of all, giving you all of the background information about this movie. And see, here is, there's Judy Garland in the costuming she was going to wear in the movie. And then there's Susan Hayward, same costume. And they say that Judy Garland even went on and kept that costume and wore it on stage. So the part of Neely O'Hara that's played by Patty Duke in the movie shows that she just plays um, a character who, she's not a real sexy, glamorous character. She's supposed to be a very good actress, and she just wants fame. That's what she's there for. She doesn't really care about her personal life that much. She just kind of just a like I said a total hot mess I mean now you could probably use someone like Lindsay Lohan or somebody like that in, in the part or Demi Moore or something someone who's always in the press for doing some bad girl stuff and uh, they would probably now put her in something like a black Chanel jacket or something that's not flashy at all or just you know, basic but well done because the studios would want her to look great. In the book, she becomes, uh, I don't want to tell you. I don't want to tell you that because I don't want you. I want you to read the book. I think Anne, who plays the 
New England aristocrat, kind of a Grace Kelly type actress. She could easily be played by Anne Hathaway. I think that would be perfect cast. Of course, I'm not a casting agent, so I can't be sure of that. But um, I think uh, they would probably, of course, have her dressed in ball main jackets and very... Um, maybe Chanel, but they would, wouldn't cast her wearing black. I think they would probably cast her wearing just tweed Chanel. That would probably be more her style. And then Jennifer North. Oh my. That's, she's kind of a boho chic sort of girl and very um, easily persuaded and, you know, doesn't really know what direction she has. And I think the perfect person to play that part with blonde hair and frosted lipstick and uh, spiky lashes would be Margot Robbie. Oh, my goodness. She would be so great in that. So you can tell by my enthusiasm that I am obsessed with all of this. And at some point, I'll probably reread Valley of the Dolls. Maybe when I'm bored one day, I'll pick it back up. And then, um, like I said, I highly recommend that. That's the Jacqueline Suzanne book. And there was a remake of Valley of the Dolls, which would, I can't even imagine how bad that would be. I haven't even bothered watching it. But if you fall into that Valley of the Dolls obsession, read Dolls, Dolls, Dolls. Now, you know you're going to have to watch this movie. And you can fast forward through all the crap parts. It has a lot of tragedy and it's glamorous and it's bitchy. And I think it's those parts of it that are the best parts, except I love the costuming and hair and makeup. And I, you want, if you like hair, makeup, costuming, and you like vintage clothing, things like that, you are, it's worth watching. It's really worth watching because I think you're going to find out that each character has some part of their personality that is relatable. I am going to carry on with my day, and I hope you have a great week. And you know what? I will see you next week. Have a great week. Bye.